Yo yo, what's up you guys, it's your boy Shield Coomer and in this video we're going to cover uh, Dawn of the Infinite, uh, Murazon's Rise on a key level 22. This was week uh, 2 shenanigans I believe, week 2 right? I think it's week 2. Oh no, week 3 actually. I don't know, doesn't matter, it's fortified volcanic spyfall, that's what matters mm -hmm. and basically as you can see here a little bit of a rough start honestly this was this was very chaotic and maybe you can even see that i actually kind of had like some pretty big lag here uh also this is uh the first key in which i've been trying to play like double dps trinkets uh, just trying to kind of squeeze out a little bit more damage and stuff it worked out pretty okay i didn't really feel like weaker healing wise and i did do a lot more damage and you will see i think towards the end and if not, I will always have like a, you know, the the Raya page and stuff where you can check the deeds and whatnot. But on 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 average, these two trinkets do about twenty percent of my damage, so they're definitely something to kind of. Uh, it is something to utilize. And here, as you can see, like as I said, this has been pretty rough. Uh, this entire pool, I, I managed, I feel, to kind of pull it back together to, to, to some extent, but things got really hectic here. And by pure luck, I would say, <laughs> some of us survived here, but, you know, this is pool that... I feel like people play this wrong every single time. So basically, what you want to do here is you want to be pulling the shield guy, and then... In my opinion, like playing Even. both of these uh, quote unquote mini bosses is a little bit tricky because what you want to do is you want to stand in shield. Uh, it really helps. It's Avoid. what I think 50% damage reduction. So on the higher keys, really, if you, I mean, Even. I don't think 22 is that high, right? It's, it's not. I've been a little bit slow pushing this season Even. because uh, I've been more focused on kind of getting the gear Avoid. and also uh, for the rates. We've been progging quite a bit of mythic. Even. So I really didn't even have like that much time to push M plus, so I'll, I'll get to it, you know, because I play with, I play punk keys, I, I don't have a team or anything, so it's not, you know, that easy for me to always find a team and stuff, and also, especially if I fall behind, you know, getting into push keys is a little bit more difficult, you know, I can't jump into doing straight lap like 24s, 25s, nor do I want to, to begin with, I do kind of want to, you know, progress slowly and learn myself and then hopefully, uh, you know get good enough to get that uh, title finally but yeah basically is what i'm what i'm saying is um you want to utilize the shield there i think it's it's pretty it's pretty important uh and that that blue beam that you see sometimes on the screen is basically one of the trinkets by the way just saying and here we've, we've really been sloppy with interrupts and stuff honestly we should have been dead like many times here i just failed to dodge i'll be honest guys one of my biggest weaknesses is i whenever there's something that does frontal uh not not frontal but where they charge i have a really hard time seeing where the mobs are facing i think like world of warcraft is just a very cluttered game and whenever there's more than like one mob i, I feel like it's very difficult to see where they're facing so even though i know to anticipate the charge like i was fully aware that it's coming i just couldn't tell on time like where the mob is facing and you know that's obviously not a good thing but uh, you know i don't know what to do about it it's, uh, it's just hard to see i guess maybe playing like a little bit more zoomed in or something like that but that would just give me like worse overview in general um unironically wow is a pay to win game <laughs> You need, uh, <laughs> I genuinely feel like if you have a 1440 monitor, you're the big advantage. I don't have one at the moment, so I feel like my UI is pretty small and stuff, just because I, I need to save that space like, for visibility as a healer, because, you know, the frames do do take quite a bit of uh, space. Obviously, all of this is just copium and excuse, you know, but, uh, uh, yeah, it's not really paid to win, I'm just making up shit. <laughs> Right, so going into the boss, um, basically the whole gist of this fight is Spark of Tear, dispel one at a time, make sure people are healed up before the other one. You can either let it expire or dispel it. Never dispel before another mechanic comes, especially Soak. 
because you don't want like you don't want people to get slammed right as they soak soak does a significant damage so you know making sure that people are topped is very important obviously dodge this frontal i actually don't know if this can hit you or if it's just a tank frontal but you know obviously don't be in front of the boss when he's doing a frontal here we just did a bit bad bait uh, ideally you want to bait all of this bronze uh, bronze poop you want to bait it on the outside simply simply so you have space to soak all the balls here i like to make sure i apply all the atonements to everyone you can also rupture into this just for you know that a uh, little bit of uh, extra uh, absorb as you're you know heading in and here we let uh, a few balls go in so the damage was a bit higher but luckily nobody died so you know just heal up break the shield do damage really simple boss really it's it's a it's a, it's a simple boss and once again when the sparks come out you really want to dispel one fast and then let the other one you know if you have a cool big aura like mine you can also track it there but i just i just track all of this on the frames i don't really look at the uh, i don't really look at the these big auras that much but they're a good reminder you know they're a good reminder over the course of season i always kind of train my eyes to look at specific things you know now the keys are still as i said i haven't been playing too much i played quite a bit but not that much uh, in the in the higher keys so um you know i'm still training my eyes to kind of see certain things and stuff like that so you know over time i'll polish my ui a little bit and move the weak cores that i don't need and stuff right now i'm just using like all those default packages that you guys can get as well it's nothing special it's uh, just the basic weak cores that anybody can download and uh, i do find them pretty useful actually I, I i've been you know there used to be a time long time ago where i was uh, you know one of those uh similar to classic candies you know why you need weak core to play the game but over time i really i really wow it's just a game that you know weak cores just make it easier so if you want to be a competitive player you really do need to have a lot of weak cores and you need to have good weak cores as well and this is the, my favorite classic with the uh, demon hunter tanks i'm like don't pull before i'm there please i'm drinking and the guy pulls of course before i'm even there like the, bo the, the mob is already doing aoe as i'm coming in which is really bad for for us as discs like we don't wanna we don't want this to be happening so yeah that's it kind of pissed me off a little bit but you know it's fine i get it maybe he didn't see what i said or maybe he just doesn't give a fuck it's fine either way you know you just have to heal a lot here on 45 week the, the, this aoe hurts a lot and you will also have those uh, layers on the floor now i will mention one very important thing guys if you're tracking my debuffs and sorry my buffs not my debuffs actually please do note that i am currently playing twilight equilibrium and that's important that's important i use the health pod there by the way so just again be careful because people tend to line of sight here because uh, because of the stairs so yeah it's very very scary so again, do be careful with uh, Twilight Equilibrium. Uh, I mean, be careful. Not be careful, but do keep in mind like what spells are being transformed into dark and what are which ones aren't. Because you really, I feel like when you need that big heal, you really do want to utilize it. Yeah, you wanna be, you wanna make sure that you're casting like a light spell right before the dark uh, penance uh so it's a little bit of tricky it's a little bit tricky you know because now uh more spells are converted to dark than they used to be due to mind bender and stuff so yeah just calculating things and also one more thing i would say is easy way to increase damage by playing twilight equilibrium is to make sure you're always rotating uh the the dots right like the your uh, purge of the wicked it's very important that you cast it as a buffed version because yes you can buff it with twilight equilibrium and it will be buffed for the full duration unless you refresh it unbuffed and you can also spread it with penitence as a buffed version so it's a very very important easy way to get like plus what 15 percent damage is to i mean it's not really 15 percent damage but a little bit of min maxing is you know you can do that obviously this isn't this shouldn't be your like number one priority but if you really want to optimize your damage and stuff uh, that's one way to do it yeah that's a pretty easy way to do it guys you just need to optimize your uh, your casts of purge of the wicked a little bit and how you spread it and that's uh, again it's a small gain but it is 
It really adds up over the whole dungeon and it will improve your over overall by quite a bit. Since I recently started playing Twilight Equilibrium again, I'm also not very like great at tracking it and stuff, but uh, again, you know, it's it's like a minor min-max thing that really matters, I think, in like higher higher keys where damage really starts to matter way more. As you can see, I'm still doing pretty good damage, especially in the AoE, you know, not really as happy, not really in the AoE, but uh, you know, Overall, just uh, around the 70k, you know, side like this doesn't have that great AoE, okay. but uh, we do have that dot spread, we do have that uh, mind bender slashing thing, and uh, it all adds up, you know, little by little. And also, the trinkets are getting more value in the AoE, at least the ones I'm wearing currently. So, that's uh, that's nice, you know. <laughs> These packs, honestly, like, there's, there's really not much to say here. It's just like you have to interrupt and uh, stun CC heal up people really not much to say In here I, I looked a little bit at my like overall damage of the trinkets because as I said this is like where I started using them a little bit more and you can see like how much just how much damage the trinkets are doing it's really a lot like that that uh, one trinket is doing like 12% of my damage and then the other one is doing like what 9 or 7 I, I forgot now which number it was but it's just very very significant damage you know and i mean healer damage at, at, at this point in the season honestly at least so far it hasn't really oh. felt that important it really hasn't it's it's more been about like surviving things and just not getting one shot and timers are pretty lenient for the most part and in, in a few keys and this was one of them where the timer was kind of rough they kind of adjusted for it so it's all been Pretty chill, honestly, but uh, I, I would say that you, you gotta still be careful, yeah? You definitely want to respect the fact that, uh, you know, damage can come from trinkets, and if you... 
for example especially during tyrannical weeks if you feel like you need some uh, defensive firepower or some more burst healing or whatever Avoid. don't be greedy and play some offensive trinkets it's it's a good idea to just uh, be defensive and play whatever is uh, whatever is necessary to keep your team alive you know don't prioritize higher overall for the sake of doing a little bit more damage that's not gonna make or break your key in the most cases unless obviously you're an experienced player and you know exactly what you're doing i mean then obviously do whatever you want right but uh yeah and there you saw me die because it wasn't on me so i kind of expected not to go on me but i guess i should have been ready so yeah don't don't like plant and cast during that it, because as you can see you can uh, you can easily ah. die if the dps leads the the shooting towards you which you know just passively happens as they're trying to dodge and so you need to be ready to dodge as well i guess i, just, I, I was just a little bit greedy i guess yeah uh, again very important not to forget that uh you can actually do like quite decent damage by just extending your mind bender as much as you can i mean these are basics but i still try to talk about them because you know just in case somebody's starting to learn this or whatever it's uh it's really important it's uh you know just extending your mind bender can come in a lot of forms at the moment Avoid. it's uh, you want to be smiting a lot you want to be using your pen uh, penance as much as you can and then obviously don't forget that uh, both uh, mind blast and uh, shadow word that will also give you that extension Avoid. and therefore allowing you to cast even more smites and even more uh, penances so you can really Avoid. like especially when mobs are close to dying you can really extend your mind better quite a lot of I've, I've even had cases where i really like had everything up and then if i'm not disrupted in the in the casting too much i'm really like i've, I've been able to like get uh, my mind my mind bender to be uh, up by the time the cooldown wears off as well so i want to do a little bit is i kind of want to try playing shadowfin for that reason because sometimes it feels like uh, mind bender is like almost too low cooldown but you know it, it really hasn't been necessary so far so I've been just running with Mindbender, I didn't really feel any need to change my talent so far, so I'm not gonna do it. And yeah, this boss used to be an absolute monstrosity, but they kind of nerfed it. Um, the main issue is that Archer, in my opinion, with a serrated arrow, serrated shot, or whatever it's called, it's a bleed, it's a nasty, nasty bleed that can really wreck you. Um, and then on top of that obviously there is a mage that will cast there is an axe guy which is also very scary there's like a couple a couple of things that can really screw you over on this boss so people tend to kind of bloodlust this boss although i do think on fortify this boss is oh i think easier than morchi and the reason for that is that with morchi the fight really extends if you don't bloodlust it because of the fact that uh, she'll go into a phase right so that just kind of makes it a little bit more annoying but yeah you know it's it's whatever you feel like i think you lost this for safety you lost morchi for time but uh, both fights are fine to last you know you can obviously choose where you want to go first and then you can use your last that is pretty much the same same timer you know so it doesn't matter in terms of like how many last usages you get but it doesn't matter in terms of like what boss you find easier or harder uh for your group i feel like with this group this boss wasn't really an issue because we had sack we had bop we also have uh one more d bleed in the evoker so really even if the bleeds went through we were fine and you know i think yeah it was it was all kind of chill This is probably the worst part about this dungeon is that this high travel time it's Empower. pretty bad but as you can see here um, this pack again pretty chill for us as healers it's there's gonna be a little bit of damage especially if people fail to interrupt and if they eat frontals they'll just die so really there's not like too much to talk about i by the way on, on spiteful weeks I, i've started liking playing dominant mind is it worth it to to dominate shades so so it really depends like I, I i find it useful in tight spaces especially dungeons like i don't know waycrest manor or something amongst those lines i really find it cozy to just be able to you know if, if my team isn't helping me or simply they are out of tools to help me uh sometimes like, you just take care of it yourself and instead of an enemy you get a friend right morchi is pretty straightforward obviously i'm gonna say dodge frontal obviously try your best but that's kind of on tank 
I think what's important is that you agree with your group where you want to stand and stick to that plan. Uh, the worst Five, part about this four, is I don't three, see the capes because three, of the plates, one. so I really need to sort that out. If somebody knows how to, if there's like a way to make the plates look different only for Morchi, let me know. I don't know what really to do for it. And I will say this boss is actually tricky, do not underestimate Morchi. Uh, she is pretty straightforward, but there's a couple of things that you need to be careful of so first of all there's no damage incoming for the majority of the fight but then you know as they say shit hits the fan really quickly when these traps happen as you can see here this guy will yoink my trap last second and you just have to be ready to adjust so pre-plan your movement um and there's a lot of healing needed because every time somebody does the trap it extends this dot on you right Five, on everybody so four. You really want to have like quite a bit of One. healing ready for for that phase in general and uh, for some reason the dh is just kiting the shade instead of putting it in the trap i guess all traps disappeared so he doesn't really have any other option so given given that fact he actually kind of did okay but he also did screw me over because he he kind of made it so that i don't like i i i have to heal a bit more but it's fine like you know not no big deal uh, it was it was a good save, better than him dying anyway. So yeah, and now I'm the yoinker. I yoink the trap now. Uh, I, I I do I do think that the best way to handle this is to let your healer soak first and then so they can heal. Because really, there's quite a bit of damage coming here. It, it looks it looks insignificant, but it, it is quite a bit, and it, it can be easily healed up, but not if you have to run as this. That's our problem as discs. We need to. You know move constantly so yeah that's uh, one of the Five, flaws of the spec four, and here as you can see like <laughs> we just go into one. this phase and we almost kill her in this phase pretty much but she can't die until she does the frontal i think so yeah lost a bit of time there but it's fine this pack by the way is very dangerous yeah i, I just want to warn people you know if you're you know if you don't have that much experience in this dungeon and stuff just be ready because this pack is it's one hell of a pack it's it will do it does a lot of damage it, it, it just shreks it's the aoe that we also faced on the stairs earlier um i strongly suggest saving your flashlight procs for you know just the movement heavy movement phases and normally i would say with the current playstyle spam your penance on the cooldown but uh, you know as every experience disc i think uh, you know will tell you it's uh, you know that is currently our only healing spell uh, in a way where like it matters uh, radiance isn't that strong as it was last season we lost that four set that also made it like into a total powerhouse so really radiance has lost a lot of priority as you can see it almost does no healing you really want to just be ready with your dark penitence already rolling you want to have your mind blast buff pretty much either preemptively ready or going with the first tick of damage and then mind bender already on the target and then the dark penitence as the heavy damage is, is is going strong really we are really strong healing wise right now this is post nerf by the way as well nerf went live a few minutes before i started this dungeon so this is post nerf our healing is just absolutely disgusting this season guys we are really strong in terms of hps pure hps but you just have to time your spells properly also don't forget that you have twilight equilibrium if you feel like you really need that extra little bit of healing you can throw in like purge of the wicked there even on the move and then shoot your dark uh, dark penance and then you want to like smite 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 again purge the wicked and then again dark penance and you will get like pretty strong kills guys it's it's really nice um it's it's all about buffing your penance to be strong and here we agree that aug will do the orbs so you know i just let him handle it i trusted him and he proved himself to be very reliable in terms of orbs usually i like to do them myself but i also if somebody else is willing to do them i will i will like let them do it so i can focus on healing a little bit more and honestly it's pretty nice because um you know usually if somebody's volunteering that means they know how to do it and it's, it's really simple like all you have to do just in case somebody doesn't know i'll explain basically the orbs explode and deal away damage and there's two of them standing in the orb will slow down its fall so basically the whole gist of it is that 
you see when it explodes it gives you this debuff that increases the damage taken by 75 percent so you never want to let two orbs fall down at the same time that will most likely be like a one shot without defensive or at least very close to the death uh so you really want to just sit in it until the debuff expires you let healer top everybody up and then you let it fall down again so as a healer it's really nice to have that control over that because you know exactly when your penance is coming so what you can pretty much do is you can time it for that and here i stayed in the orb just in case if if he wasn't you know ready for it luckily he was so i just stepped out of it instantly as i said really evoker was on top of it so kudos to that Evoker in general played pretty good. Actually, this whole whole squad played pretty good. The only time we really trolled hardcore was the start of the dungeon. We we just kind of missed a lot of interrupts and we weren't sitting in the shield, so we just took way too much damage and we died to some frontals as well. But that's just normal. That's you know, things happen. Sometimes people need a little bit of warm up and a wake up call. And this to me is kind of the hardest maybe part of the fight. There's like quite a decent. Uh... Well, not really, actually. Yeah, I'm talking gibberish. There's really no damage incoming if people are not standing and stuff. So you can... Nah, that's not really that hard. You just need to move with the team. But yeah, the orbs now, and then it gets chaotic. Yeah, this this part is a little bit tricky. It really feels chaotic, but it's actually not... Uh, especially now that I'm looking at it, like, outside, you know, outside perspective. I always say this, if you want to get better at games, one great way to do it is watching your own replays. And you can see how many mistakes you do, and you can see how I got separated from the team here um i guess you could call that a mistake probably yeah like i wasted a lot of movement there instead of you know just feeling safe because really i was chilling with the healing but i'm not chilling in terms of positioning as you will see now i'll, I'll go all the way back luckily you know he's in execution range and that's when this is the strongest because we have that extra extension through shadow word that and obviously extra mindbender procs so yeah, it all worked out in the end. Anyway, it ended up being a plus two even, so that's nice. Uh, this key used to be very tight on time, but now it's not. And also, if you have a lot of damage, it's great. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the content, let me know. If you don't like something, also let me know. Uh, you know, feel free to leave a comment, like, subscribe if you're feeling extra spicy and you want more of this content. And I hope to see you guys on the next one. Keep an eye out on that. Uh, bye bye. Have a great day.